Yes, it is true. I burned my Baha'i project. I'll show you the details and why here in a few minutes. But until then, I've had a lot of cool stuff happening this week that I would love to share with you. So check it out. The first update, this area here, this is my backstage 2,000 square feet. This was treated this week with the Recognition Fusillade, the second application. You guys have been asking about that. Am I going to apply that again to get rid of the Bermuda grass in here? That was made a few days ago, but we're going to wait until we get some full results, do a before and after, and then produce that video. But I just want to let you know that's coming in the next couple, two, three weeks. And speaking of that, I figured I'd give you an update on the plug grow in. We got a little shadow over there, but if you guys remember, this was the first place, well, this whole lawn here really, but this was where I had major Bermuda issues at last year, sprayed. This was where I had major Bermuda issues at last year, sprayed and uh, killed it all. I, I can tell you that none of the Bermuda has come back yet, but I do have some broadleaf weeds coming in here. This is Spurge, so that's just one of those things because again, we have thin spots and so they're opportunistic, they can get in. You will not find Spurge out there anywhere, but it has made its way in here. Still a little bit of dead Bermuda left in here, but it's slowly breaking down as we get more heat and stuff like that. But for the most part, you can see we're mostly filled in and that is due to these right here this is how saint augustine grass spreads i always like to show this sorry buddy wake you up from your slumber this is called a stolen and it's a runner see that that is saint augustine grass that's how it spreads it moves these runners all around and fills in so that's why this grass can be planted in plugs and in fact there is no seed available we're going to look at some really cool stuff from a sod farm here in a minute but that is how St. Augustine grass grows, and that's how it's able to fill in and take over. But one thing I wanted to show you, we're going to come over here. So this is another spot that is filling in. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I'm going to get down here for you. Can you see how it's indented? Here, let's see if you can see it here. Can you tell that that's indented right there? So when you look at it from like this, you can see there's grass everywhere. It's all filled in. That's because this was a bare spot. And this is where there was a weed, I think, that I killed. So this was a bare spot. Now the St. Augustine grass has moved in from all around, and now it's filled in. However, what you see when you get down here is that it hasn't come up to height yet. It's filled in across, but it still needs to come up in height. And this is where people, when they have St. Augustine grass and they don't understand it, they'll say, it feels so spongy, I don't understand. This illustrates that because the stolons, here, let's get one out of here, disturb it. I'm doing this for, for science. See that? See that one right there? So that one's moving across, filling in. But they do that first, and then once they don't have any more room to, to fill in that way, then they start stacking up on each other. And so when you get out here into the main part of the lawn where you would say it's spongy, what that is is it's a whole bunch of these little stolons all woven together to the point where they stack up nice and tall. Another reason why you need to cut this grass tall because these are surface, these are above ground and they stack up on each other. But you have to understand, that is the reason why we love St. Augustine grass because it's stacked up with stolons that thick and all of those stolons are pushing grass blades around and up. That's how it keeps weeds out. It can compete with weeds because of that spongy-like feeling that you don't like that's why it can knock weeds out or keep weeds from invading. Here's another spot that has filled in now. And I actually had plant, that's you can't tell, but that was a plug I planted there. And now the plug has moved all around and then the grass from the outer edges has moved all in. But again, let's get down in here. You'll see it's an indent. Here, let me flip the camera over, see if that helps get a little lower. So you can see here, full lawn. Now you come out over here, and then can you tell that it drops off right there? Can you tell that this is lower and that the edges out there are higher? Can you tell? But again, that's that same illustration. 
the stolons have not been able to stack themselves up right there. They will over time and the rainy season will really help. But that's the next step. Now that everything's filled in across, now it needs to stack itself up to give you that spongy-like appearance that a lot of you don't like. And it's not really a spongy appearance, it's a spongy feeling when you walk on it. And so what people want to do is they're like, oh, I need to dethatch this. Like, no, leave it alone. That is St. Augustine grass. It is, some of you, I mean, I think it's pretty soft to walk on. That illustrates it pretty well right there. My whole feet can almost get absorbed by the sponginess. I mean, I think it's pretty soft to walk on, but most of you that came from up north and you have Kentucky bluegrass, you will not enjoy walking on this. And that's why I say St. Augustine grass is really not meant to be utilized. It's just meant to be admired. I can further illustrate this point out at the sod farm. This week I was actually invited out by Bayside Sod. Here locally, they had a field day where they invited a whole bunch of turf grass producers out and they did a whole bunch of demos of really cool equipment that they use to not only maintain the sod, but harvest it. And if you've never seen sod being harvested, this would be a really cool video for you. So these are called ribbons and when they cut the sod, as you can see, they just cut the sod right there. What's left are these ribbons and the reason they leave the ribbons in is because this is St. Augustine grass right here. It grows with what? Stolons or runners. So you leave these ribbons and those runners will run across that way and those runners will run across that way and fill this in. So then in about a year's time, you have a brand new sod field and you can reharvest. No seed needed. It's all propagated from current or mother plants plant to plant to plant. Now you guys have seen we did rolls at the Freedom Factory, but that was Bermuda. This is St. Augustine rolls. I don't think anybody's ever seen this before, if I'm honest with you. I hope that was helpful to you guys. I thought it was really cool. Thank you, Bayside Sod, for inviting me out. But to put a bow on this, so when you guys go and you have thin spots like this, and you have St. Augustine grass, by the way, it's the exact same for zoysia, Bermuda, centipede, and even Bahia grass. Picture those ribbons that they leave in the sod fields. They allow those to grow back in together. And this is the same way that you'll take care of thin spots in your own home lawn, is allowing those stolons to do their thing and move back in, or in the case of Bermuda or zoysia, stolons and rhizomes, to fill in those thin spots. Let it do all that natural all you need to do is frequent mowing, rely on the rain or, if no rain or if no rain irrigation, and then keep it pushed with nitrogen and all that will fill in eventually. On Wednesday evening, I had the opportunity to be part of a cleanup day through Brett's Church. 
Brett, in case you don't know, he is our director of operations here at Yard Mastery. In his church, they do outreach where they help people with yard work. One of the members is a Marine veteran named Tom, and he and his wife, Megan, they live in Mayaka. Tom is disabled and is confined to a wheelchair due to an injury he sustained playing sports on base while a Marine. But he doesn't let any of that stop him. Currently, they live here in Florida, and they have a good-sized property where they take in rescue dogs. <laughs> Tom has big plans to expand that in his reach, and he's been clearing the property all on his own. The funny thing about that is he's actually been using an Ego Weed Whacker while sitting in his motorized chair, and he's moving along slowly, clearing and maintaining that property all by himself. Think about that, he's got a 14-acre property, of which about an acre is cleared, and he's managing all that from his wheelchair with an Ego Weed Whacker. And so I was able to join with the church members Wednesday night and take over some of my ego tools to help with that workday. Everybody got in on the action with them. Now by far the most popular tool was the commercial bike handle brush cutter. My first time ever using it. And this thing, it ripped through all of the underbrush with ease. Also the commercial 10 inch telescoping pole saw allowed us to reach up to 17 feet high into the canopy of some of the larger trees. And the farm and ranch chainsaw also picked up with some larger limbs. Brett, he also brought out his aluminum deck mower, that's not mine, that's his, to knock down some of the higher grasses that were growing, and we had some fun just seeing how much that thing could eat. All in all, it was a successful night, and we were actually able to surprise Tom at the very end. I got, we got something to show you here, but, so he, the reason I'm interested about this, so I don't know if you know, but I have a YouTube channel, that's like how yeah. I make my living, that's why Brett works with me. That's what I heard. He was showing me that you've been doing this with a weed whacker, which I saw, yep. but you were using an Ego weed whacker, yep. which is cool because that's like our sponsor. And uh, so what we did was I said, uh, I, I called him up and I said, you guys got to see what this guy's doing with this weed whacker. I said, does it all. <laughs> I said, what if we could make it easier on him by giving him a zero turn? Have you, do you know what a zero turn is? I do know. Well, come on, we got one for you. We call, I called Ego and I said, we want to give you a zero turn. They said, yes. Dude. Check this out, man. And I think it'll work for you because it all works on arms. I don't have it out right now, but I have a uh, cherry picker that can lift me. Oh, so I, well, I figured you would figure out how to get on it. I didn't, wasn't this worried about that. To that chair. That's but look at that, wild, huh? Dude. So now everything works from the hands. All you got to do is hit that parking brake, which you can use that stick yes, for. Yes, I can. And I figured, dude, because you're mowing this with a weed whacker, all of this, right? Uh, so. Like, how uh, are you mowing all this out here? So my buddy David, He's he comes here, out yeah. with that uh, Cub Scout over oh, there. Oh, okay. And he hits, he hits a good portion of, like, the brunt of it. See, now you can do it, because this is 50... 50 something, this is not a small one. Yeah, so yeah. it's a 52, and with all six, which there, there's only three in there right now because the other three They're are being used. They're being yeah. used, yeah. But there's six 12 amp hour batteries. It'll mow up to four acres. You guys are wild. So. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, when I like I said, when I heard about it, I'm like, I bet Ego could help this guy out. <laughs> and they're like, we'll help him out. Dude, that's sweet. They didn't even hesitate, so. So that's why I. it's been kind of hush hush. I told Dave, he, I was like, Dave, you gotta, you gotta keep him from buying a zero turn uh, because dude. last time I was out here, Tom's we like, Tom's it. like, all right, so <laughs> I'm thinking we could probably finance a zero turn, pay it off in a year or so, and yep. I'm like, Dave, you've gotta just, just hold him off for a little while. All right, well, I'll let him take it off the trailer so, and then. So that's cool. You have a cherry picker to put yourself on it. Yeah. That's what we were talking about. How's it gonna get on? I said, this guy will figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's a Marine. Yeah. So, Bad, dude. Here it is in all its glory. So some of you guys may be wondering, how is Tom gonna get on that? And you may have missed it in the video there, but he talked about how he's got a cherry picker. He's already thinking in his head, he's got this cherry picker he's gonna use to get himself onto the mower, as well as I'm sure Megan will help him out too. And personally, I had no worries about that part because I knew that a guy that is mowing his entire acre lawn with a weed whacker from a wheelchair could figure out how to get himself onto a zero turn. And here's a picture of him using it already this week. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know for sure Tom is definitely enjoying that new zero turn. We'll do a follow up with him here in a little bit. Now, one thing, Ego is having a sale until April 30th, where with the purchase of select equipment, you can actually get a free battery. I will link you to the landing page below so you can look at all the eligible equipment, but that's a pretty good deal. Buy a piece of equipment, get a free battery. I'll link that below and it expires April 30th, so make sure you hurry. And last but not least, I'll go ahead and show you the burnt Baha'i lawn. And it is, it's all my fault, you'll see. All right, I'm here back at the Bahia Lawn Project. Look at this. It looks like we got some damage from the herbicide. In fact, I'm sure that's what that is. 
Look at that. That is wild. We'll talk about what that is in a minute. We'll figure it out. But that's crazy. Look at what it did. Look at that. That is definitely stress from the herbicide. It's like, it's not, well, in this point, particular spot right here, it's just stunting. That's what the red is. It's stunting. But there are a couple spots where you can see I got heavy handed, where it, uh, like here, where it's really zorched it out. Look at that. It's not dead. It's just really stunted it back. That's very interesting. And I used the uh, Roundup for lawns, which only allows that lower rate. So I used the low rate. Very interesting. Rainy season will fix this. Sorry for the wind. Rainy season will fix this, but... Now these are the areas where we ripped out the signal grass because I just got frustrated with it. <laughs> so we'll have to throw some seed in there um, once we get to the rainy season. We're not there yet, but that right there, so that's where we ripped out signal grass. But this is where I sprayed a little heavy-handed in here, I guess. Wow, that is so wild. Okay, well, lesson learned on the, uh, on the uh, I guess it would be the image for Southern Lawns as well as the Roundup for Lawns Southern it's looking good though other than that well i was hoping this was going to be a better update jason isn't here right now so i just happened to stop by so i'm gonna have to give him a call but okay guys there you go i've just it seems to be like setback after setback here at the old baha'i lawn project so pretty wild okay more updates oh i was gonna say these looks like i gotta i gotta call jason and ask him but it looks like something's getting marked i hope they're not gonna dig us up so it goes all the way down through that lawn, too. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, and it goes all the way down the street. So that's a whole nother thing. But, man, herbicide damage, so wild. Okay, that's all for now. Okay, now this is important. I want you to learn from my mistakes so you don't repeat them. I'm a YouTuber, but I'm not perfect. So it happened with weed control, but not the weed control you think. So you saw the, the video where I mixed up the weed control. I actually used this Roundup for Lawns. I used the low rate, which is what this allows. Again, I got so much content on this. I'll link below, including written content, going through the label, everything else. But that Roundup for Lawns is the same as image for Southern Lawns. These are both very much okay to be used on Bahia grass, and that is exactly what I did. I mixed this up according to the label, put it in my sprayer, spot sprayed, but, but again, you can see there was some damage. One of the nice things about recording everything I do is, when I do get damage, I can go back, and I went back and watched the weed control video, the spraying of the Bahia grass, and I can see, yes, the areas that I sprayed for weeds, those are the areas that are damaged. So it was definitely from the weed control but not from that one. You see, this goes back to rinsate management. So if you could look in the bottom of this sprayer, see how there's a little bit of liquid left in there? I don't know if you can see that, but you can see it down in there. A Little bit of liquid in there. When I filled the sprayer to go spray the Bahia, what was left in there was a little bit of residual, just about that much, maybe an eighth of a gallon of Celsius weed control that had been fully mixed in water and everything, but it was about an eighth of a gallon left in the bottom of that tank. And all I did was just fill right on top of it and mix and mix this weed control right in. That little bit of residual that was in the bottom would have been no issue at all because Celsius is safe for the grasses that I have here. I have, I have zoysia grass, and on that side I have St. Augustine grass. The Celsius can be used in both of those, so it's perfectly okay when you have just a little bit left in the bottom to go ahead and fill on top the new weed control. I could have gone out in my lawn and sprayed and had no problem. Any little bit of residual Celsius that was left wouldn't have hurt the grass again because Celsius is safe for zoysia and St. Augustine grass. And of course the Roundup for lawns is too. So I would have been fine, but that's where my fatal flaw was. Celsius weed control is not labeled for Bahia grass. That weed control is, but when I filled on top of even that tiny little bit left in there, put all that water on and watered it all down and then added this in, remember this didn't hurt it, but that little bit of mixed up Celsius at the bottom, again, this can be called, we call this rinsate. That little bit of rinsate that was left was enough to damage the Bahia grass. And so if you ever wanna know what does Celsius, even when severely watered down and that little bit left, what does it do to Bahia grass? You can see it burns it, turns it that red color. Now, is it gonna come back? I hope so. I, I need to tell, I haven't told Jason yet. I actually texted him a few days ago and I said, hey man, I know what the problem is, but I haven't 
I haven't had the guts to call him back yet. He's such a nice dude too. He's not gonna be mad. He'd probably laugh about it, but I'm upset about it because this literally puts us back where we started last year. So the instructions will be, please water every other day or so. Just stick to the basics, Motol, water. Let's hope for rain. And I'm pretty sure that a good majority of it will come back. But if it doesn't, well, then uh, well, we'll see what we're gonna do. I can tell I'm not looking forward to it. But mistakes get made. The good news is you learn from them. Hopefully you will learn from my mistakes. Always be careful, especially because I know a lot of you guys, you take care of neighbor's lawns, right? So this could happen to you too. Always make sure that everything that's in your tank is safe for both lawns or get a dedicated spray tank for your neighbor's lawn and a dedicated spray tank for yours, especially if you have different grass types and then you know everything will be good. So again, I'm a YouTuber, I'm not perfect. I do the best I can though. As you see, I read labels. I try to be careful, but I make mistakes too. And again, I hope you learn from them. So with that, I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the lawn. You have to take the parking brake off first. Gotcha. And then you'll see the green light come on and out. Speed of the mower, your blade speed here, that engages the blades. Now the best part, they have a they have a special thing over here for for Marines. Oh so this is a box of cranes? They have a box of cranes. They have a, a snack tray right here for you. Box of and it has a box of crayons <laughs> for you in case you get hungry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's the but <laughs>